Bro, you're not even home. Turn the fan off. What's going on my friends? This is Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U and today I'm going to show you, thanks to my child, how to put a fan timer in your bathroom. So all the time <laughs> I walk into my house, <laughs> I'm so sorry Josh, I'm going to shit on you for like 20 minutes. Uh, my kid leaves his fan on nonstop and I'll wake up in the morning and it'll have just been run for like eight hours throughout the middle of the night. I don't know, just gets up, like takes a shit maybe, <laughs> and like turns the fan on and then leaves it in there. And then throughout the day too, like, I don't know, go in and take a shower and then leave it on for like the entire day while I'm at work and I come home and it's still on just all the time. The damn fan in his bathroom is on at all times. So if you have a kid or wife or husband that leaves, the bathroom fans on all the time. Here's the fix. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I went and got a timer from Home Depot. This is a Lutron timer. It's in the Maestro system, so it looks like other Maestro devices. Um, there's so many that you can get. If you have this problem, you wanna go get a timer. There's some that are like analog, where you have like a rheostat essentially, or something that, you know, like a knob that you turn. Um, there's others that have like multiple different buttons on them, so you can push for five minutes, push for 10 minutes, all of that kind of jazz. I like this style just because it's clean, kind of matches everything else that I've got. Uh, it's just one button, so you tap on, tap off but it's got little rockers on the bottom so you can adjust up or adjust down if you want to adjust the different times. So that's kind of your preset. It, the, this thing will always stay that way once you adjust what time setting you want. Then all you gotta do is just go into the bathroom, boom, hit it on, boom, hit it off if you want to do you know, on or off. Um, otherwise you just hit it on, it'll stay on for that amount of time and then eventually just shut off on its own. So I'm gonna put this in. I'm just as guilty. I'm just as guilty. I'm just as guilty. Because I'm just as guilty. Like, I don't do it anywhere near as often. But, you know, like, I'm going to leave it in there for a while. And my bedroom is on the complete opposite side of the house. So, like, I'll go in, do my business, turn my fan on, go <laughs> cook a meal or something, start watching a movie, and I'll just forget for, like, two, three hours. Um, so that's just stupid. But I think that's a common problem that a lot of people have. So I want to show everyone how to install one of these things. First thing that we're gonna do, obviously you always wanna disconnect power if you're working on anything, especially if you're one of those DIY people that's not actually an electrician, but you're doing electrical work, which you shouldn't be doing, but you're gonna do it anyways. I get it, turn power off. Uh, there's really no reason to go into a box that you know has live power and pull anything apart and start doing stuff. You should have a multimeter too, if, especially if you're a DIY person, like get something so that you can learn how to read voltage. If you're gonna work on electrical stuff, you need to know whether or not power is actually on or whether it's not. There's a lot of things out there like uh, tick tracers that are not very reliable and you kind of have to know how they work. They, it's like through capacitive coupling that they work. It's not actually sensing a voltage because a voltage is between two things. So you can't just hold a stick on something and then tick, 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 and actually know what's going on with the circuit. So be a little smart, get, a, get like a cheap little multimeter from Home Depot or something. They're, they're really easy, but at least it shows you voltage. It shows you whether or not you have some, you know, potential between one thing and the other. So anyways, we're gonna turn the breaker off. We're gonna um, check with the multimeter, make sure the power is off. We're not gonna shock ourselves. And then you open up the switches. <laughs>
I've got two switches, so I'm just gonna get the, the light switch out of the way. I'm only working with the fan switch. All right, so we see how we've got an incoming hot, an outgoing hot, a pigtail that wraps around a screw over here and then leaves and goes to another pigtail for this device. There's, a, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's okay. We've got a leg over here and a leg over here. But what's funny is that this leg, they actually put under the plate, which is great. I mean, these things are designed with a plate, so you put the, the wire behind it. And it's even got two slots so that you could put two wires behind it. Rather than doing that, whoever put this in, just stripped out this part of the conductor, had to cut it out with a knife, probably took way more time just to do that, and then wrapped it around the screw, which again is okay, it's just kind of shitty that they have these, all these different points of a hot connecting. What I am going to do is take all of that stuff off and create one wire nut with two pigtail wires going off of it, and essentially, uh, it's just gonna clean it up a little bit more. And you notice too, there's no ground right here um, there's a ground hooked up here, which is great. You know, they ran a pigtail back here. But a lot of these old houses, you notice, this was built in 1968. A lot of people do this. They would just stick the grounds in a wire nut and fold them into the back of the box. Um, so it kind of sucks, but what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna add a pigtail coming out of here. That way I have one going to this device. This is fine, that can stay like there. It's actually um, integral as a part of this device. But I'm just gonna redo a lot of this stuff. So now that I know power is off, I'm gonna start disconnecting all of my conductors. I know for sure what my hot conductor is, which is my incoming power, and what my leg is that's going up to the fan. So I disconnected them. My leg, I'm gonna fold up to the top. That reminds me, oh, the one going up to the top is the one that goes up to the fan. The hot coming in, I'm gonna push down so that I just know that's the one coming down. So both of these devices already have um, ground pigtails on them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna put any pigtail off the ground. I'm just gonna make up my joint like that. I'm gonna use a red wire nut just cause we're getting a lot of wires in this thing. Make sure that we're good and tight. Always try to tug on them a little bit. Make sure that they're not gonna pop out on you when you go to fold everything in the back of the box. And then carefully fold this back in the box. Okay, then we've got our leg, we've got our leg. Now we've got this joint that we just made that we're gonna put this lead in. Again, I'm not gonna pigtail another lead out just to put another wire knot on, save myself some space. I'm gonna give that an extra little kick. Not too much. I don't wanna mess the wire nut up. 
So now this device is finished. It's got this extra lead on it in case we have a three-way situation. We don't on this dimmer. Um, so I am gonna hook up this lead. This is gonna be my hot, and then I'm gonna have my switch leg that goes on the other side of that. So now I need to just bend some hooks. It sucks when you have really short wires like this, when somebody didn't leave you any extra wire. But this was wired back in the day um, when you know people were a little bit more cautious of material cost. Uh, a lot of times nowadays we're not. But if you actually go look back at, you know, like um, during war times, like a long time ago, Vietnam, World War II, stuff like that, we would actually change what the conductors were made out of because at that time we needed those materials for war. So we would use things like um, aluminum that we would dip in copper or coat with copper and that's called copper clad aluminum. So the entire conductor was aluminum, but it had a little bit more conductivity on the top of it because it's actually the, the material at the surface was copper. That's pretty interesting, right? So we went from aluminum to conductors to copper clad aluminum conductors to um, full copper conductors. Pull that screw out a little bit more. I'm kind of at the max though. You can feel when it doesn't want to come out anymore. If you give it a couple more turns after it doesn't want to come out anymore, that screw's going to fall off and it is a pain in the butt to get back in. Okay. I hate short wires. Okay, so we got our switch leg, we got our hot, we've got our grounds, we got our switch leg on the dimmer still, we've got our hot tied in, we've got this extra little three-way wire that we can just fold in the back. Um, always try to fold your wires as pretty as possible in the back so that they don't get in the way of the device. I already know ahead of, my, ahead of time that these two devices are not going to fit next to each other, that this little gap here is too big. So if you look, it's actually spaced too far apart. So you have to tear the, the tabs off of both of these. Unfortunately, you can't just tear, tear it off one and everything fit together. It's still just a little bit too big. So you end up having to tear both sides of it off. Don't tear all this extra stuff off and don't accidentally have the flips, the switch flipped upside down and then think you have to tear these off and then realize the switch was upside down and now you have to tear those off too. fit together in a way that that plate will sit on there perfectly. So make sure that we got all of our wires folded in the back and then we can go to push this thing in. There's not going to be a bunch of stuff in the way. Kind of hard because whoever made this box up back in the day did not do a fantastic job. When I put my screws in, when I'm putting devices in, I always leave uh, some space back there at first. Notice I'm not putting them all the way in. Leave some gap, that way you got some room to adjust because most of the time they're always gonna go in crooked. Most of the time they're always, I don't think that's right. You can't say most of the time always. It's either most of the time or it's always. Uh, anyways, you get what I'm saying. Most of the time you're gonna have to sit and do some adjustment on these. So I like to get my screws started. And just make sure that um, we're sitting flush against the wall over here. You want to make sure that your devices aren't crooked like they are right now. You can see on the bottom of this hole, the screw is all the way to the right. Up here, it's all the way to the left. So I already know 100% that, that that device is going to be crooked. So I actually need to move the 
this over a little bit to match up at the top. Then the device should be pretty close to straight. And then I need to make sure this one matches it. sitting pretty level. So I know now when I go to put my plate on, it's gonna snap perfectly in place. Now the only thing left to do is put the plate screws back in. Jesus, I need to get my kid to wash his wall. <laughs> That's gross. I'm pretty sure everybody's bathrooms look like that. Unless you're a clean freak, um, in which case, this has probably just bothered the shit out of you for this whole video. I'm so sorry if that's the case. No, I'm not. This is my life. This is my house. Judge away. Fuck off. Anyways, okay. Um, so you see how the plate went on just great. Like we didn't have any problems. We didn't have any of these that were like crooked or anything. Everything went on really straight. Um, the plate itself, you know, is level because we checked all of that ahead of time. So bubbles right in the middle. Now all we're going to do is test it. So it works in manual mode where you just turn it on, turn it off, but that setting is on on. So if I want this to be like a 15 minute timer, what I'm gonna do is hit this and you see the little red indicator scrolling down, go down to 15 minutes, hit it. And then literally all I have to do is just walk away. When I'm done doing my business in here, after 15 minutes, this thing's gonna shut off. If you wanted to, you can just shut it off, it doesn't matter. It stays at a 15 minute timer though, so the next person that does come back in here and hit on, it's at 15 minutes. And you can adjust it you know, while it's going, it doesn't matter, it's gonna, it's gonna do whatever you tell it to do. But this way it can't ever stay on. The only way that that's not true is if you set the setting to on up here and walk away. Then it's still just like a regular switch. So just make sure that your settings are at you know, whatever, I think 15 minutes unless you like to sit and play video games while you're taking care of business. <laughs> uh, 15 minutes should be a good enough time. So, that's it. That was pretty painless, right? Like, that was a matter of minutes. Uh, and I had a two gang setup. If you have a one gang setup where it's just one switch that you're like, uh, trying to get on a timer, it's gonna go much easier than that. The two gang makes their more wires and. Uh, there's just a lot more to deal with. So let me know if you guys have any questions or comments, concerns, concerns, concerns. Um, please like and subscribe. This helps me out tremendously as a creator. This is what I do for a living. So if you like and subscribe, uh, it like helps me pay my bills. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, oh. Practice exams, if any of you are getting ready to take your test, your apprentice, and you want to uh, go practice what it's like to take an electrical exam, go to electricianu.com forward slash practice hyphen exams. There's a link in the description below. I've got merch available if you go to the website, electricianu.com forward slash merchandise. Um, that's it. Love you crazy people. See you in the next one. Best can't music and video.